Starship is set to take off from the ground once again in just a few days. This flight promises to deliver the most spectacular performance we've ever seen before. To achieve this, SpaceX has made some big changes across all components of this flight that you might not even be aware of. So, why has SpaceX changed the Starship flight for and how? Do these changes fully ensure the success of the flight? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. When we have a new opportunity to take action, it's undoubtedly a step forward in that work. SpaceX is no different. As they prepare for the fourth launch of Starship, it signifies the emergence of a new achievement. The fourth flight of Starship builds on the mixed results of previous tests. By analyzing these outcomes, SpaceX has implemented a series of hardware improvements and software upgrades to enhance the likelihood of a successful mission. First, let's talk about the hardware changes in the second stage of Starship. In preparation for Starship's fourth integrated test flight, SpaceX has implemented significant changes to enhance the safety's re-entry and flight control capabilities. One of the most critical areas of focus has been the heat shield. During the preparation period for the launch, Elon Musk shared a lot of information related to the re-entry and heat shield, demonstrating the priority that he and SpaceX engineers have placed on this issue. Although achieving full reusability with the heat shield is so challenging that Musk exclaimed, no one has ever succeeded in creating a fully reusable heat shield. Shuttle required approximately six months of rework. This is not an impossible task for SpaceX. However, SpaceX must first ensure that the heat shield can withstand the extreme conditions encountered during re-entry from orbital velocity because in previous tests, Starship exploded while demonstrating its re-entry capability. This has involved meticulous attention to detail, including the removal of horizontal seams, which were potential points of failure. The heat shield tiles have been carefully re-adhered to improve their durability, with additional measures taken to roughen the metal surface beneath the tiles, enhancing their adhesion and overall effectiveness. In addition to these physical modifications, SpaceX has addressed issues that arose during the spacecraft's orientation control phase in previous flights. One significant problem identified was the clogging of valves responsible for roll control, which compromised the vehicle's stability. To mitigate this, SpaceX has upgraded the relevant hardware to be more resilient against blockages. Furthermore, an additional set of roll control thrusters has been installed to provide redundancy, ensuring that even if some thrusters fail, others can compensate to maintain proper orientation. These enhancements are crucial for ensuring that Starship can maintain the correct altitude during re-entry, allowing the heat shield and aerodynamic control surfaces to function as intended. Together, these modifications represent a comprehensive effort to improve the reliability and success rate of future Starship missions. For the booster, SpaceX has also continuously made improvements to achieve their goals for the fourth launch. Booster 11 has undergone substantial enhancements aimed at improving its structural integrity and operational reliability. One of the most significant upgrades is the reinforcement of the methane tank, which now features an increase from 24 to 74 internal stringers. This threefold increase in internal supports is designed to bolster the tank's strength, particularly during the intense phases of launch and reentry. SpaceX has also added more of supports and stringers below the grid fins, effectively doubling the thickness in these critical areas. These reinforcements are expected to enhance the overall rigidity of the booster, minimizing flexing and potential damage when the structure is unpressurized or subjected to re-entry forces. Alongside these structural improvements, several key modifications have been made to the booster's venting infiltration system. The cowbell deflectors on the LOX tank vents have been significantly reinforced, likely to prevent damage during the harsh re-entry process. This reinforcement ensures that these components can withstand the intense thermal and mechanical stresses they encounter. Moreover, a new vent double plate has been installed on the methane tank, providing additional structural support and resilience. To address issues observed in previous flights, such as engine shutdowns caused by filter blockages, SpaceX has improved the filtration capabilities of the booster. Enhanced filters will better prevent contaminants from clogging the fuel lines, thereby maintaining consistent engine performance. In conjunction with these improvements, SpaceX has revised the startup procedures for the Raptor engines during landing burns, aiming to ensure a smoother and more reliable ignition process. These comprehensive upgrades to the booster structure and systems are pivotal for achieving a successful flight and advancing SpaceX's goal of rapid and reliable reusability.
After making hardware changes, SpaceX continued to revise and upgrade the mission objectives to aim for the most successful flight possible. The fourth integrated flight test to Starship sets the stage for a series of ambitious objectives, with a primary focus on validating the splashdown capabilities and improving the reusability of both the booster and the Starship vehicle. A key goal for this flight is to achieve successful splashdowns for both vehicles. For the booster, SpaceX aims to perform a virtual tower catch, where the booster will target a precise location in the Gulf of Mexico, simulating the accuracy required for future catches by the Mechazilla system. This maneuver is critical for demonstrating the booster's precise control during the re-entry and landing phases. For Starship itself, a propulsive landing attempt will be made for the first time. This involves the spacecraft using its engines to slow down and control its descent, rather than relying solely on aerodynamic surfaces. A significant focus is placed on maintaining the correct orientation during re-entry, which is essential for ensuring that the heat shield and control flaps function effectively. This maneuver is the landing flip that we saw in the latest timeline update for the fourth flight recently announced by SpaceX. During Flight 3, SpaceX opted not to perform a belly flop maneuver because the mission included a propellant transfer demonstration. This involved transferring methane from the header tanks to the main tanks while the Starship was in zero gravity. Consequently, there wasn't enough methane left in the header tanks to attempt the belly flop maneuver. With the successful completion of the transfer demonstration and the associated grant funding from NASA, SpaceX can now utilize the header tanks for their intended purpose, fueling the engines during the belly flop maneuver in future flights. This adjustment allows them to proceed with more ambitious re-entry and landing tests moving forward. In addition to these splashdown and landing objectives, the flight includes a novel plan to jettison the hot staging ring. This component, used during the initial phase of the booster's flight, will be discarded after the boost backburn to reduce the mass of the booster before it initiates its landing sequence. This reduction in mass is intended to improve the overall performance and control of the booster during its descent, further enhancing the likelihood of a successful recovery. These objectives are not just milestones for Flight 4, but also foundational steps toward achieving SpaceX's long-term vision of rapid and reliable spacecraft reusability. Each successful test and iteration brings SpaceX closer to its goal of making space travel more efficient and accessible, paving the way for more ambitious missions in the future. Looking ahead, SpaceX has laid out an ambitious roadmap for future demonstrations that will further validate the capabilities of the Starship system. One critical aspect that's been deferred for future flights is the on-orbit relight of the Raptor engines. While this demonstration will not take place during the fourth flight, it remains a pivotal objective. Successfully executing an on-orbit relight is essential for controlled deorbit, ensuring that the Starship can safely re-enter the Earth's atmosphere rather than becoming an uncontrolled piece of space debris. This capability is crucial for sustainability and safety of long-term space missions. In addition to perfecting the re-entry process, SpaceX is eyeing the deployment of payloads as a significant milestone. By the end of the year, there's a strong possibility Starship will be used to launch and deploy Starlink satellites. This effort represents a practical application of Starship's capabilities, offering an opportunity to test and refine payload deployment mechanisms while simultaneously advancing SpaceX's goal of expanding its satellite internet constellation. Using Starship for these launches not only pushes the boundaries of what the spacecraft can achieve, but also demonstrates its potential for frequent and efficient payload delivery. In general, future test objectives are crucial steps towards achieving SpaceX's vision of a flexible and fully reusable space transportation system. Each successful mission and performance builds confidence in the reliability and operational readiness of Starship, paving the way for more complex endeavors, such as conducting larger Starships and pursuing even more ambitious goals. Let's look forward to the exciting developments that SpaceX will undertake in the future. They're sure not to disappoint. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.